Hello friends, my name is Mohammad Kashif. Okay, I am a gate qualified. Uh, I have an experience of uh, four years in industries. I have been working in Saudi Arabia in a reputed MNC. Uh, I have presented papers in uh, two international conferences and uh, seven to eight national conferences, out of which two of my research work has been published in the uh, IJRT journal. Okay, so I will be taking thermodynamics for you guys. Okay. So you all know thermodynamics is a very important subject. Every year something around 10 to 12 marks is compulsory from thermodynamics. Okay. So what I will be doing is I will be taking all these topics. Introduction, then first of thermodynamics, second of thermodynamics. This is the way I will be proceeding with the chapters. Okay. Then after second law we will go with air standard, IC engine, pure substance, power plant, psychometry and refrigeration. So I am I will be covering refrigeration also under thermodynamics. Okay, I am not considering it as a separate subject. So I will be considering refrigeration in thermodynamics only. So out of which this power plant is also very important because some of the topics like uh, can be some concepts you can apply in fluid mechanics also. In that also we have thermo machinery. So somewhat concepts are similar. Okay. So what today I will be teaching is today I will be dealing with introduction. So if your base is strong, then rest of the understanding of the rest of the topics will be very easy for you guys. Okay. So what I promise from my side is I will give you the subject entirely and I'll make sure that you will understand each and every concept properly and you will be able to solve any kind of problem from thermodynamics. This is what I can promise you. So what you have to do is you have to make notes take points each point mark what is important and revise it daily okay so let us begin with introduction first point okay first let us understand what is thermodynamics thermodynamics is basically a study of two forms of energy what are the two forms basically one is it is heat and the other is work okay so thermodynamics is a study of either heat or work. We all know that heat is not is also called as low grade energy and work is called as high grade energy and these two heat and work are mutually convertible. You can convert heat to work and work to heat and now the question arises is why is this called as low grade energy and why is this called as high grade energy. Low grade energy because the whatever the entire heat you supply that you cannot convert it into work whereas the entire work input can be completely convertible into heat which is why it is called as high grade energy okay now next what we do is <coughs> hmm? we will see how to analyze any thermodynamic problem okay so basically before the starting of any problem, okay, we'll ask question to ourselves these three questions. Okay, the first question being, what is the nature of the working fluid? So, first question, what we ask ourselves is, what is the nature of working fluid? Nature in the sense, either it can be ideal gas or a steam. Okay is ideal gas or steam. Ideal gas means oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, air, etc. The next question what we ask ourselves is what is the nature of system? It can be either closed system or it can be isolated system. So next what questions we ask ourselves is what is the nature of the process? Nature of process. That is, it can be either reversible process or it can be irreversible process. Okay. We will discuss each point step by step. Okay. As we proceed, we will discuss what is open system, what is closed system, what is reversible process, what is irreversible process. So, before solving any kind of problem, first we will analyze we will ask questions this question what is the nature of working fluid then what is the nature of system what is the nature of process how does it help means it will help us clear the picture which formula to be used 
what is the concept to be applied okay so we'll proceed with the next topic <clears throat> so first we'll talk about ideal what is an ideal gas ideal gas is a gas which obeys all the gas laws at all temperatures and pressure so now question is what are the gas laws you might have been you might have been studied in uh, 10th 11th 12th uh, boyle's law charles law 1 charles law 2 these are nothing but gas laws okay we'll see one by one first let us see boyle's law okay consider mass to be constant hmm? temperature is to be constant if temperature is constant given the mass is always constant okay then pressure is inversely proportional to volume this is what Boyle's law is okay next we'll talk about Charles law one okay so in the Charles law one okay we we'll consider pressure to be constant given that mass is constant if pressure is constant then pressure is directly proportional to volume okay so we can write p by v as constant okay so oh, coming back to Boyle's law we can write a further step is equal to that is p by v is constant okay so this is what Boyle's law is and this is what Charles law one is okay remember this equations okay this is equation one this is equation two okay now next shall we will go with Charles law two okay in this okay volume is constant given that mass is also considered constant then pressure is directly proportional to temperature so if you remove the proportional until the sign then sorry yes pressure is directly proportional to temperature p by t is equal to constant okay now, if we combine all the three equations, Boyle's law equations, Charles law 1 and Charles law 2, we can write it as P V by T equal to constant. Okay. So, what is this constant? Constant is nothing but R, which is characteristic gas constant in kilojoule per kg. Kelvin. So this value of R varies for different different gases. For different gases, different value of R. Okay. Value of R for air is 0.287 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Okay. Now let me transfer this to here. Okay. We can write this is PV. So we will not consider mass as constant, we will consider mass to m r t. This, this equation is called as ideal gas equation. This is ideal gas equation. And this equation is to be used only when the gas is ideal gas. Ideal. You cannot use when the gas is not ideal okay where here p is pressure which pressure absolute pressure absolute pressure is nothing but gauge pressure plus atmospheric pressure okay v is the volume in meter cube mass in kg r is the characteristic gas constant T is the temperature, absolute temperature in Kelvin. Okay. Now this is one of the form of ideal gas equation. So there is another form of ideal gas equation which is 
molar form of ideal gas equation. Okay, let me write it down. That is P B is equal to N R T. This is the molar form. Okay, molar form of ideal equation. Here P is nothing but absolute pressure which is gauge plus atmospheric v is the volume n is equal to number of moles and be careful over here this R is not the characteristic gas constant. Okay, you might see the slight change in writing the way of R. I have put double line to differentiate. Okay, this is nothing but universal gas constant. Okay, whenever you are writing it in molar form, we got to use the universal gas constant. Its value is constant. A point. 8.314 kilojoule per kg mole kelvin okay this is a molar form so many of you might be having doubt what is a mole okay one mole is nothing but see each and every gas has its own molecular weight if you express that molecular weight in terms of gram it is nothing but a mole. Okay, let us take an example. Example. Let me consider nitrogen. Molecular weight of nitrogen is 28. Okay. 28 grams of nitrogen is nothing but 1 gram mole of. Okay. So, your doubt is cleared now. And N is also nothing but mass divided by molecular weight. Okay. So, you might have seen this equation many, many times. Uh, you might know this relationship. Okay. This is characteristic gas constant is nothing but universal gas constant divided by molecular weight okay now what i will do i substitute n is equal to mass by molecular weight okay so pv is equal to m divided by molecular weight into universal gas constant into t so R by molecular weight is nothing but characteristic gas constant. Characteristic gas constant that is PV is equal to MR. Clear? Yeah. Great. Next, we will see what is our Gadro's law. Okay. Consider two containers. Okay. One is one contains hydrogen and one contains nitrogen. Okay. The volume of these both containers are equal. Temperature is also pressure. If this is the situation, then the number of molecules, okay, number of molecules of hydrogen and number of molecules of nitrogen will be same. This is what Avogadro law is. Simple? Great. Next topic is kinetic theory of gases. You guys know that in gases molecules are always in motion. If they are in motion that means we can say that they possess some kinetic energy and while they are moving they collide with each other during which their velocity changes. This is nothing but the kinetic theory of gas. Okay. There are few assumptions in kinetic theory of gas. Okay. So let us see one by one. There is 
no intermolecular forces between molecules no intermolecular forces between and second assumption is it has point mass that is no volume third assumption is collisions are perfectly elastic perfectly okay so let the, let me write down the equation for uh kinetic theory of ideal gas okay so no need of derivation for this just remember the formula that will be more than sufficient for the gate exam okay that is p d equal to 1 by 3 okay this is valid only for ideal gas valid only for the ideal gas where m is the mass and what is this c this is nothing but root mean square velocity of molly this is a root mean square of the molecules now we know one more equation for ideal gas that is pv equal to let me let me instead of pv let me write it as mrt this 3r is constant so can i say that temperature is directly proportional to this then root mean square is directly proportional to root 2 directly proportional to root point is very important remember this point okay root mean square velocity of the molecules is directly proportional to square root of absolute temperature okay now okay let us take up a problem okay so the question is like this the volume and temperature of air air is what ideal gas remember in a closed vessel of volume 2.87 meter so let us take up a problem okay the first problem the question complete the next problem sir hmm? okay so this is a question okay the volume and temperature of air air is what here we can say nature of fluid is ideal okay in a closed system by nature of system is closed a uh, 2.87 and temperature is 300 kelvin temperature is in kelvin now here comes a tricky part okay the gauge pressure indicated by the manometer fitted to the wall of the vessel is 0.5 meter cube this is gauge pressure not the absolute pressure okay they have directly given the value of r that is 0.287 for air and atmospheric pressure they have given the atmospheric pressure as well okay atmospheric pressure so we can easily calculate absolute pressure no worries then they are asking for the mass of air in kg in the vessel while before solving make sure to take a note of what is the unit they are asking in what unit they are asking okay they are asking here in kg okay so let us solve this problem so what i would recommend is always write down the data because if you don't write the data there might be a chances of you doing a numerical value error so that will completely change your answer so it is better to write down the values okay before solving the problem always take down the data so volume is 2.87 meter cube okay and the temperature is 300 kelvin and they have given us gauge pressure as 0.5 bar then atmospheric pressure as 1 bar okay next what we need to find mass in kg 
as soon as you write down this, write down the unit as well. Then you will not go wrong while answering the question. Okay. Now here it is telling it's a closed system of volume 2.87. We can say that volume is constant. Okay. So it's not required. We will consider volume as constant. So we know that what is the ideal gas equation air because air they have, they have told clearly it is an air so we can use ideal gas equation that is p e equal to mr t we have volume yes we have r value yes temperature yes we need to find mass but we need pressure they have given pressure in terms of gas pressure and atmospheric pressure what we need to find we need to find that absolute pressure which is this what is absolute pressure gauge pressure plus atmospheric pressure which is 0.5 bar plus 1 which is equal to 1.5 bar so now you have all the values now we can easily determine what is mass okay so pressure is 1.5 if you multiply with 10 square, it becomes kilopascal. We have volume 2.87. Mass is what we need to find out. R value is given 0.287. And temperature is 300 Kelvin. Now we can easily calculate mass, which is, this is simple problem, right? Great. So let us go for second problem so second problem let us go hmm? certain amount of ideal gas a certain amount of ideal gas they are directly telling that it is an ideal gas no need to worry about is initially at a pressure is initially at a pressure and temperature T1. First it undergoes constant pressure process. Okay. It will undergo constant pressure process 1 to 2 such that T2 is equal to 3 by 4 times the T1. Okay. Then it undergoes constant volume process such that T3 is equal to here no need to worry about because they are directly mentioning it as an ideal gas. Okay. Then first it is at initial temperature and pressure of P1 and T1. Then it undergoes a constant pressure process such that T2 is equal to 3 by 4 times the T1. And then it undergoes constant volume process such that T3 is equal to T1 by 2, that is 0.5 of T1. So it's asking us the ratio of final volume to the initial volume. Okay, come on. So look, let's start the solution. See, if you have understood the gas laws, then this is a very simple problem. Okay, so you go, you are using the concept of gas laws here. Okay, so first is, first let us take down the data initially at p1 t1 right then it undergoes first process process one process one what's happening it is a constant pressure process from charles law one we know that if pressure is constant okay we can say that Volume is directly proportional to. So what is happening here? P2 is 3 by 4 times the T1. Which is you can say 0 0.75 times the T1. What is happening here? There is a temperature drop. Right. So if the temperature is decreasing. We can say that volume also. Temperature decreases, 
volume also. So this is your first process. So let us, what is the second process? Second process, what does it say? Volume is constant. What does Boyle uh, Charles Law second state? If volume is constant, pressure is directly proportional to temperature. Okay. What is T3? T1 by 2, which is 0.5 times T1. So we can say temperature is decreasing, therefore pressure will also temperature decreasing. Now if you see T1 is the maximum temperature, T2 is 0.75 of T1 whereas T3 is 0.5 of T1. I can say that T1 is greater than T2 greater than T1. Now, it will be very simple if you plot PV diagram. Okay. So first, what does it say? Pressure is constant and the volume must decrease. So we can say that, okay, volume is decreasing. So next, what does it state? Volume, constant, then pressure is proportional to temperature. We know that temperature is decreasing, so the pressure will decrease. So this is pressure will decrease. Okay. We can say that V2 is equal to V3, P3, P1 equal to P2. Okay. So comes here comes the final step now. It is asking ratio of final volume to initial volume. We can say V2, V3 is equal to V2, right? So we can write V2 by K. Okay? So next. See V2 by V1. Now we can take it as V volume is directly proportional to temperature from Charles law. Since pressure is constant V1, V2. So we can say that pressure is directly proportional then we can say V2 is equal to T2 by T1. Clear? Great. Now, what is T2? 3 by 4 times of T1. T1, T1, T1 get cancelled, so it is equal to 0. Point. Simple, right? If you remember gas loss, this problem can be easily solved. Great. So, let us see what is thermodynamic system now. Okay, what is thermodynamic? Suppose consider this is the region where we need to focus where we need to find what is, uh, we need to analyze our problem. So we will consider this as a system. System is nothing but any specific area or region on which we will be doing our analysis, thermodynamic analysis. Okay, that is called as a system. So this is system, this is our, okay. Now this is system boundary, okay. You can either supply heat and obtain some work or it can take some work or you can give some work or end of them heat. System can either take heat or give heat. System can either do work or take work. Okay. Whatever the heat and work, they interact always through system boundary only. So we can say that heat and work are boundary phenomenon. This line is very important. It has been asked many times in gate for one mark. Okay. Two to three times they have asked it. Okay. Next we will see what is specific heat. Specific heats of ideal gas. Which is nothing but Cp and now, first we will see what is specific heat at constant volume, that is 
CV. Okay. Consider a container. Okay. Here the volume is constant containing mass of around 1 kg and the change in temperature is 1 degree Celsius. Okay. This is nothing but your rigid vessel which is why the volume is constant. Now I have supply heat. When I supply heat, there is an increase in temperature. So heat is equal to Cv. Kg Kelvin. So when I supply heat at constant, this is a constant volume, there will be an increase in 1 degree temperature. So we can explain in a nutshell that Cv specific heat at constant volume is nothing but the amount of heat required to increase the temperature of an ideal gas through 1 degrees okay, of unit mass of unit mass at 1 degree Celsius. So mass is 1 kg, change in temperature is 1 degree Celsius, heat supplied is C. Simple. No need to memorize anything just Think that it is the amount of heat required to heat uh, the gas of mass 1 kg uh, to increase the temperature by 1 degree Celsius. This is your Cv. Now let us see what is Cp that is specific heat at constant pressure. C e constant pressure. So let me consider a piston cylinder arrangement. So pressure is, I supply the heat. The definition of CP remains same. Only the difference being that here the heat is supplied at constant pressure. Okay. So we can uh, say the definition as uh, CP is defined as the amount of heat required to increase the temperature of unit mass of a gas through 1 degree at constant pressure pressure okay so this is what the cp is now uh, let us see what is the value of cp and cv for air cv which is nothing but 0.718 kilojoule per kg kelvin cp is nothing but 1.005 kilojoule per kg now, if you see, why is the value of Cp higher than Cv? So, here's a question, right? So, if you guys remember the diagram what I draw for Cv, it is just a rigid container where mass is equal to 1 kg, volume is constant, delta T is equal to 1 degree Celsius, heat is supplied at heat is supplied and what's happening in this case is the entire heat what you are supplying it is being utilized only for heating of the gas okay whereas in this case if you supply the heat the piston is moving that is it is doing some amount of work so if it doesn't move it is constant and it we can say constant volume right in order to have constant pressure that the piston must move up so, whatever the heat is being supplied, it is also utilized for doing some work as well as to rise in temperature. This is why the Cp is always greater than Cv. Yeah. Great. So, let us see few relations of Cp and Cv. We know that Cp is greater than Cv. And the ratio of Cp by Cv is F. Let me write down the values for gamma for different different uh, gases. 
it is 1.66 okay for monoatomic gases for single atom gases or mono atomic gases okay uh, example you can say it as uh, helium neon these are monoatomic monoatomic gases and gamma is equal to 1.4 for this is our first relation second is difference between cp and cv is always equal to characteristic gas constant okay next cv is equal to r divided by gamma minus cp is gamma by gamma minus gamma by gamma minus 1 into okay just remember these formulas okay now if in case if you don't remember what are we what are these two formulas you can just simply derive it from this equation just take cv common cp by cv minus 1 equal to r we know what is cp by cv gamma cv is equal to gamma minus 1 into gamma minus 1 equal to r cv is equal to r by gamma minus 1 same equation cp okay gamma minus 1 into r just at gamma Okay, simple, great. So let us solve a problem. Temperature of nitrogen in a vessel of volume two meter cube is two eighty eight Kelvin. Okay. A U two manometer is connected. Hmm. Which is connected to the wall shows the reading. Okay, if it is a vessel, we can say it as closed system nitrogen ideal gas. Okay, and the unit what they are asking is in kg. Okay, so let me take down the data and then we shall solve this problem. It's a very simple problem, nothing to worry about. the concepts what we have learned the same concepts will be applying over here so what it has said data it is saying that volume temperature 288 so they have given as uh, they it is said that in the question the u2 manometer shows a reading of 70 cm of mercury what is the 70 cm of mercury any pressure which shown by a device is always a gauge pressure okay so we can say that gauge pressure mentioned it as 70 cm of and it is said that atmospheric pressure is 1.01325 bar so we have it is we can we know that it has to be in absolute pressure but what is the difference we are seeing we see that gauge pressure is mentioned in terms of centimeter of mercury and atmospheric pressure is mentioned in terms of uh, bar so we can easily convert we know that bar uh, p is equal to you guys know this formula right pressure is equal to rho g into h pressure is given as 1.01325 into 10 Equal to uh, density we know is thirteen thousand six hundred into nine point eight one into h. Okay, we get in meters of mercury. Then convert it into centimeters. You get it as seventy six centimeter of mercury. If you convert that into centimeters of mercury, you get it as seventy. Six centimeter of mercury. Okay, 
So the question says that it is a vessel. So vessel of volume 2 meter cube and having a temperature of 288 Kelvin. To this, uh, U2 manometer, manometer is fixed. A U2 manometer is fixed and it shows a reading of 70 centimeter. So, first thing what we need to find, first we need to find it as absolute pressure. Okay. So, let us find what is the absolute pressure. What is absolute pressure? Gauge pressure plus atmospheric pressure. We know gauge pressure is 70 centimeter. Atmospheric pressure is 76 centimeter, which is 146 centimeter of mercury. Next, what we'll do? We'll convert this into kilopascal. Okay. So we know that P is nothing but rho g into h density is 13600 into 9.81 into the pure h value is 146 centimeter converted into meter 10 to the power minus 2 so we'll get absolute pressure as 194.5 Seven eight. Okay. Now we got the pressure value. Now next, what we need to find is here. We need to find here is mass. Since nitrogen is ideal gas, we can use ideal gas equation. Okay. So pressure we found one ninety four point seven eight kilopascal. Right. Volume is two meter cube. Now. Here, they did not give the value of R directly, but we know the relation, right? That is, R of any gas is nothing but universal gas constant divided by molecular weight. It is given the value of 8.314 is already given. And what is the molecular weight of nitrogen? 28. Remember this value. Okay. So substitute it here. M into 8.314 divided by 28 into temperature is given as 288 Kelvin. If you calculate, you get mass as 4.5. Simple, right? We are not doing anything here. We just use the concepts what we learned today. Right, ideal gas equation, then absolute pressure, then we used gas laws to solve other problems, right? Great. So before uh, winding up this class, let us uh, have a quick review what we did today. So first we saw definition of thermodynamics, which is nothing but the study of heat and work. Heat, low grade energy, work, high grade energy. Then we saw what is ideal gas which is nothing but which obeys all the gas laws. What are the gas laws? Boyle's law in which uh, temperature is constant, so pressure is directly proportional to volume. Then we saw Charles law 1 in which pressure is constant, that is volume is directly proportional to temperature. Charles law 2, uh, volume is constant, pressure is directly proportional to temperature. Then by using all these three, we came to, we found the ideal gas equation that is PV is equal to MRT then we saw its molar form that is PV equal to N into universal gas constant into temperature then after that we solved a problem then uh, after solving the problem we saw what is a thermodynamic system okay that, that is nothing but particular region on which we focus or we solve a problem upon then uh, we saw what are the specific heat CP CV. Uh, we also saw the relationships that is CV by CV is nothing but gamma and most importantly we came to know that why is CP greater than CV then we derived few relations of CP and CV then after that again we solved a problem. So in next class we will uh, start with classification of uh, system 
how many types of system is it that is able to open, close, and isolated system. And now, uh, what is the what is the property? Then what is the process? What is the path? And all these things will next in uh, next class we'll cover this. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you.